In this first presentation, I will describe the teaching of computational mathematics in the first year of the Biomedical Engineering Program at Imperial College London. Nearly all of our first years achieved the highest possible mathematics grade. However, due to differences between the various qualifications, examination boards and the selected electives, it's necessary for the start of the first year mathematics module to revisit pre-university mathematics. Since many of our students will be very comfortable at the early part of the course, they have the capacity to develop the skill for doing mathematics computationally. This skill complements the pen and paper approach and is needed by every professional engineer since it facilitates independent learning. In the first year, there are two terms of mathematics laboratories where students learn how to use MATLAB, firstly to do symbolic algebra and secondly to do numerical mathematics. Approximately half of our students will have taken a pre-university qualification that has allowed the use of a programmable graphical calculator that can do computer algebra. However, it is very rare for any student to have used a software tool as powerful as MATLAB. So in the weeks before first arrival on campus, the new first years are encouraged to remotely download MATLAB onto their own computers then to watch some online instructional videos and then to explore some simple MATLAB examples. MATLAB usage starts in the first week of the autumn term and is used constantly throughout the degree programme, possibly right up to the last week of the last term. Many technical courses are supported by laboratory activities that use MATLAB and many project activities also use MATLAB. The translation of applied mathematics into MATLAB is a skill that is likely to permeate throughout the student's professional work in life. The primary aim of the mathematics laboratory is to consolidate understanding of the first year mathematics module. A secondary aim is to provide a platform of knowledge that will be extended and refined in many technical courses where students will be expected to be capable of self-instruction in specific branches of engineering and the associated MATLAB toolbox. From week one of the autumn term, students will learn how to use MUPAD, which is a visual interface to the symbolic algebra toolbox. In the second term, the focus moves towards traditional numerical activities in MATLAB. The latter includes MATLAB programming, and that's scheduled so that similar learning outcomes may be practiced in both the mathematics laboratories and the C laboratories, for example, selection and iteration statements. Computational mathematics knowledge is gained from the second term C programming course in combination with the two terms of mathematics laboratories. So by the end of the first year, students will be able to program mathematical applications in the programming language C or MATLAB and will know when either approach is the more appropriate to follow. The first year mathematics module is divided into four sub-modules called Alpha, Beta, Gamma and Delta and each lasts five weeks, concluding with an online mastery assessment that must be passed with a mark of at least 80%. All four masteries must be passed to be allowed to sit the final end of year examination. Now students are allowed two resit attempts for each of those masteries However, resits lead to the undesirable consequence of assessment deadline collisions later in the year. Failure at the third attempt of any mastery results in failure of the mathematics module and the first year. Conversely, passing all four masteries means that students enter the end of year examination with a guaranteed 40% and therefore pass the exam. 
This carrot and stick approach ensures engagement with the course throughout the whole of the two terms, and the approach is replicated in the second year mathematics course. Each week of a subcourse consists of two lectures, followed by a study group and a laboratory. The study group consists of pen and paper exercises which test understanding of that week's lectures. The laboratory activities revisit the study group exercises but use MATLAB to solve the same problems computationally. There is an intentional delay of a couple of weeks to ensure that students master the pen and paper methods first and then the computational approach second, thereby avoiding a dependency on the computational approach. In the autumn term submodules alpha and beta, the laboratories focus entirely on using MUPAD, the visual interface to the symbolic algebra toolbox. The point and click mechanism for selecting mathematical symbols and functions is intuitive and easy to use, and reduces the need to memorize the many function names and function signatures. The computed results are rendered in a typeset mathematical notation which will be recognisable. The interface is an ideal entry point for the novice to computer algebra. The MUPAD activities are symbolic and exact and closely resemble pen and paper mathematics. In the spring term submodules Gamma and Delta, the focus moves to numerical activities and traditional text-based command line activities where memorization of syntax and semantics is critical and the computed mathematical results are rendered as text. The Gamma course covers MATLAB basics including graphics and programming. The Delta course covers both numerical and symbolic activities but the latter are accessed from the textual interface. The mathematics laboratories overlap with the C programming module which is also in the spring term and is supported by laboratories. The shared learning outcomes between the mathematics and computer modules are dovetailed into similar programming activities in the respective laboratories. The intention is that programming concepts are reinforced by repetition from two different perspectives and from two different imperative languages. The overarching aim for the year then is to achieve basic competence as a MATLAB programmer and also as a C programmer. Students will discover that MATLAB is an ideal starting point for thought experiments, building upon the vast amount of provided functionality. When thought experiments mature into a standalone solution, then the students have the capability of programming that solution from first principles in C. Each mathematics laboratory begins with a short heads up video which demonstrates new MATLAB knowledge for a particular branch of mathematics. Armed with the new MATLAB knowledge, the students can then explore the main laboratory content. This covers a review of mathematical concepts, short questions and answers, and applications from future modules in the degree programme that are underpinned by the current branch of mathematics. The quantity of content is intentionally greater than can be explored in the scheduled laboratory time. It is intended that the content will become a reference and a resource for future usage. The laboratory concludes with a short online assessment that tests understanding of the new MATLAB demonstrated in the video and explored within the laboratory activities. The heads up video demonstration uses the same examples as were used in the study groups a couple of weeks earlier. The video activities are encapsulated within a MUPAD document which is called a notebook. The notebook used in the video can be downloaded 
and used by the students to consolidate their understanding of what they have just heard and seen by repetition and then by exploration of variations on a theme. These publicly viewable videos, which come with the warts and all disclaimer, can be found by typing the text BE1 HMath1 into YouTube. MATLAB is a powerful software tool that supports two distinct mathematical paradigms. In computer algebra, there will be times when we need a numerical paradigm and other times a symbolic paradigm. We may need the numerical paradigm because of the greater speed of execution or because there is no known closed form solution or we don't need an exact result because we intend to visualize solutions graphically. The symbolic algebra paradigm has been applied here to solve a three forces problem. The word symbolic means that we use abstract symbols that can represent a number, an expression, an equation, a function, and many kinds of mathematical concept. The word algebra implies that the appropriate laws of elementary or linear or complex algebra have been used with the symbols. Therefore, symbolic algebra leads to closed form solutions. That is, the solution is expressed as a mathematical expression involved in a finite number of operations. The second paradigm uses the textual interface for applying numerical methods. Linear algebra is taught in the spring term and as is shown here, provides an alternative approach to solving the three forces problem using vectors and matrices populated with the numerical coefficients from a set of simultaneous equations. All the input data and the computed results will then be expressed as floating point approximations of numerical values. The ability to choose between either paradigm is a valuable feature of MATLAB and it's preferable to mastering two different software tools. For example, ODEs, ordinary differential equations, can often be solved symbolically or numerically. However, there may be occasions when ODEs can only be solved with either one of the two paradigms. For example, it may be that an ODE does not have an antiderivative or we are starting from experimental data. In the laboratory, second order ODEs are solved using both paradigms and using both interfaces. Thus, students will learn how to use the symbolic algebra toolbox from both the visual and the textual interface. One of the great strengths of MUPAD is its vast array of easy to invoke functions that solve complex problems quickly. I call this black box mathematics because we only need to provide valid input to quickly obtain computed results. Generally, we don't care about the method that was applied to obtain the results. For example, one and two directional limits can be found using the function limit. The numerous differentiation methods that must be mastered for pen and paper solutions are underpinned by a single function name called diff. And ditto for integration. Diverse types of equations and sets of equations can all be solved using a function called solve or desolve. For power series, functions exist for finding the sum and product of the terms and for finding Taylor and Maclaurin series approximations. A vast array of functions is further extended by including standard utility mathematical functions, for example, factorization, expansion, simplification, etc. Conversely, there are times when we really do need to get inside a method to follow the step-by-step -step route to a solution. I call this white box mathematics, where we need to follow a specific method leading to a solution to a problem. For example, it's easy to differentiate with respect to any independent variable. Consequently, it is very easy to replicate the steps within the various differentiation 
methods. For the case of integration, there are extra built-in functions for the more common integration methods. Therefore, MuPad and MATLAB provide solutions and insight into how solutions can be arrived at. The functions just illustrated can also be logically threaded together and used to perform more lengthy mathematical investigations. I call this Lego Mathematics. The example shown here uses fundamental calculus functions in the analysis of a mathematical function in order to find its asymptotes, maximum and minimum and inflection point. A light touch to assessment of the mathematics laboratories is taken in the first year. One element of assessment is the need to pass at the end of term the aggregate of all the end of lab quizzes. This applies to both terms. In the spring term there is also a coursework that tests understanding of the traditional MATLAB textual interface and includes numerical processing, graphics and MATLAB programming. This image processing application is an opportunity to demonstrate the relative merits of algorithms based on iteration and vectorization. The C programming module overlaps with the Spring Term Mathematics Laboratories and allows similar concepts to be revisited in the syntax of MATLAB and in the syntax of C. As previously stated, the attraction of starting the academic year with the MUPAD visual interface is that it is easy and intuitive to use, especially for the novice to computer algebra. However, it also has the very desirable side effect in that it provides an early insight into computing concepts. Even within a point-and-click interface, syntax and semantic issues have to be addressed. In the spring term, when all activities are invoked from a textual interface, students should be better able to cope. For example, constructing a rational equation may involve many levels of bracketing, and that's a skill that is easier to gain when the resultant equation is rendered in typeset mathematics notation. The learning outcomes for the C programming module and the MATLAB programming within the mathematics laboratories overlap. The two types of laboratory offer two chances to explore similar concepts. The first with a MATLAB interpreter and the second with a C compiler. Thus the laboratory schedules are designed to consolidate understanding of similar concepts in the same week. When appropriate, similar examples are used in the MATLAB and the C laboratories. Therefore, students will be able to translate between the syntax of MATLAB and C. This example demonstrates the coding of a power series, firstly in C, then as a MATLAB function. C does not offer any graph plotting features, while MATLAB has good graph plotting features. Thus, data interchange through the use of simple text files is advocated. Any data produced in either language can be used in the other language. Specifically, MATLAB can be used to plot data generated by C programs, and data generated by MATLAB might be used within a C program. Whilst more sophisticated mechanisms exist for data interchange, this decouple approach for data interchange is very easy to implement. The final laboratory for the academic year explores power series including Taylor, Maclaurin and Fourier series. The final example in this laboratory provides the heads up for the first laboratory in the second year signals module. 
It also provides the heads up for some C syntax not covered in the first year module. Even though the signals concepts will be unfamiliar, the students will be capable of gaining some insight from the MATLAB and C exemplar code provided here. And so finally, transferable skills will definitely be gained throughout the two terms of mathematics laboratories. The need to generate graphs, images and animations is a common requirement throughout the whole degree program, usually in the context of technical reports and presentations. This insight into the teaching of computational mathematics in the first year has demonstrated that our overarching goal is that students will be able to read and write mathematical applications both in MATLAB and C by the end of the first year. So in conclusion, if this presentation has generated any questions, then please do not hesitate to contact our admissions tutor, whose contact details may be found on the home page for the Department of Bioengineering at Imperial College London.